Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. As always, I'm Ryu. He's Age. We're back for another anime night here in the dojo, featuring ReZero Season 2, Episode 14. I can't do that with my fingers because I don't have that many fingers. Anyway, start of the second half of the season, coming off the reaction here. Once again, this episode was really self-explanatory again, so we're going to be in Theorycraft Town for a little bit, I guess, just to... uh fill out some of the time here otherwise the episode would be super short and uh i don't think age can get that short that would be uh we'd be like that uh yeah <laughs> if any of you uh keep up with achievement hunter uh, matt and jeremy recently did a uh, <laughs> a pokemon snap and the uh picture of dratini they got was literally just probably about three percent of a dratini so that that's about where we'd be at see just still not small enough <laughs> Still not short enough. That's up to you if you want to stay down there. Just, you know, that, that's on you, man. But, uh, <laughs> go, going into this, uh, we've got Otto dangerously close to becoming a character. So that's interesting. We, uh, we've got the whole friendship is magic thing going on here. As we can see, that's how the episode basically started out. Uh, he punches Subaru in the face. Then he judo throws him. Impressive. And then he headbutts him in the face. So he goes face twice. It was, it was pretty impressive. So... You know non non-healing headbutts yeah non-healing headbutt so that one hurt um yeah so as we mentioned pretty last sure, time pretty sure the healing headbutt hurts still too <laughs> well uh, yeah i mean it's gonna initially hurt and then it heals him i guess so initial hurt then it's probably okay but as we mentioned last time uh auto getting dangerously close to being a character we'll see if he becomes more than he is which looks like he has a plan that's not just a nonsensical plan and he has a plan to not a plan but a part to play in Subaru's plan with uh, the bet that he goes on with uh, Roswell which I mean if as we mentioned last time too uh, Subaru eventually becoming you know the embodiment of every sin um, you know this is this is the greed play as, as Roswell points out here yeah, we've already had the pride arc, which was the beginning. Then we had the sloth arc, which was the whole battle for the mansion last time. And now we're in the greed arc, it seems like. Right. So, you know, the friendship is magic here with the with Otto. He's asking for help. Otto's going to do a thing, as we see later. Um, We got this whole... So this, this is something right here, this scene. Either... After the whole witch's tea party, the whole witch's tea party that happened last time, Subaru can either tell people the entirety of, you know, the curse and to anybody, or he explained it to Otto in a way that goes around, you know, the scene with, you know, Satella grabbing his, his heart and, like, saying, hey, you can't say that, what are you doing? Yeah, either his... Either his confrontation with Satella in the Witch's Tea Party removed the restriction of not being able to tell other people about the curse, or, yeah, he managed to come up with some sort of, like, clever way to tell Otto about his whole looping ability without actually telling him of the curse. Right. Because, as he mentions later, in this Rom scene here, which she didn't get to burn anybody again this episode she is building up a serious backlog <laughs> it's gonna be all over man she's actually just being helpful this episode yeah it's freaking me out but uh <laughs> after this whole bet with roswell he just mentioned straight up like oh it's not like i have to worry about dying anyway and he literally says that straight up and Otto's like yeah well whatever basically you know yeah that's, that's not a problem for you um, so either he, again, as we mentioned before, I don't have to freaking repeat it, but so we'll see going forward, whether that restriction is lifted or not, or if he was just being clever, um, I'd say it's 50, 50. I, I don't know. I'll coin flip that one personally. I think it's more likely that he was just being clever, but there is still possibility that his whole interaction with Satella there caused her to change the rules on the curse. Right. So, then we had this whole scene with Roswell, which was interesting, and Subaru made a super greedy bet. And, uh, 
as Roswell pointed out, he is locking in checkmate. So assuming he pulls this off, if he dies in the future after, you know, pulling off this bet, he'll, he'll have already had lock, ro, ro, but that, 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 what's his name? Roswell. Thank you. Put the sign up. Roswell locked in and checkmate. So he's good. So he has to get it right this time. Essentially, yeah, the way it came down to is he currently has Roswell in check and that he has Roswell in a very awkward position and now Roswell basically has no no thing, nothing that he can really do except for just kind of hope Subaru course corrects to the way he wants him to. Because more or less all of his plans immediately went out the window when Subaru lost a kid in his blessing. Right. He was pretty that mad was about that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like the one outcome that he couldn't possibly plan for or do anything about if it came around. So he has an advantage over Roswell here in that Roswell's more or less stuck having to do what Subaru wants to do. And so, yeah, he's basically deciding to try to lock that in where it's if he does manage to actually beat Roswell in this case, then Roswell is more or less going to have no choice but to just go with him from here on out. Right. Because just to clarify everything in case people are wondering, Subaru can't take the trials anymore. He, yeah. he lost it. He can't go in there even if he wants to. So... Yeah, he lost the kid in his blessing, so he lost his way to actually contact a kid reliably and he can no longer take the trials. At this point, the only way he can interact with Echidna is if Echidna comes to him, or if he manages to summon forth the tea party without using the trial. Right, which she can't come to him willingly outside of the uh, the ruins, right? He, has to, he would have to be in there? Uh, we don't know exactly. So um, until the sanctuary is, you know, fixed then maybe she can come to him freely. Yeah, we don't know exactly what her limitations are there, but we've seen with the whole thing with, like, lust and stuff like that, that the witches can pull someone into the tea party themselves. So right. we don't know about the restrictions of, like, do they have to be in the ruins or not. Right. I'm just assuming that if the sanctuary is fixed, they'll probably have a... At least a kidna will have free reign to contact him whenever... Yeah, because that releases her spirit or whatever the, the issue is. So in theory, yeah, in theory, it'll it'll help her. So we'll we'll see what happens with that. Uh, but you know, Subaru made a uh, very dynamic. I am here. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that was that was one hell of a way to open the door. <laughs> and as Roswell does mention, I didn't expect to see you again in this life. What the hell? <laughs> What are you doing? Well, <laughs> let me tell you about what I'm doing. I'm getting super greedy. <laughs> he even made the, the greed smile. It was impressive. But he's got to pull it off, so he, he, at least he's uh, looking for a, a good way out of this, and I think I think he's got this now. He, he's got this, you know, George Lopez style. He's got this, Angie. He's got this. So... And having Roswell in this position is really beneficial for his side, so, you know. Yeah, if he can get Roswell as an actual ally, then that very much clears a lot of the major complications that would be the story going forward, because not only would that, that would, essentially that would mean that he has less Roswell interference, but then also Roswell himself is both a strong mage and a pretty big political power. I mean, like I said, he's the only reason why Amelia is even allowed to be in the Royal Selection right now is because of him backing her. Right. So having him out in, in his corner entirely is huge, you know, as you just mentioned, and they probably won't have to deal with the assassins anymore uh, unless they just get pissed and want to kill Subaru anyway, which you, you never know. Elsa's weird. <laughs> yeah, like future storylines involving Elsa and stuff like that would be potentially we'd have to see if she's like mutually working with uh, Roswell or not. 
but he still has to resolve the conflict with her right now because resolving the assassins is part of the bet right so he has to pull that off but still uh it'd be weird if elsa became part of the harem later right <laughs> now she's i said i'm pretty sure she's more or less just a freelance assassin that roswell's hiring that she's not actually like loyal to him specifically right but uh We'll have to see exactly once we get to there, because Sanctuary comes first. Right. I'm just talking about future possible hilarious interactions. Like, you know, I have some mixed feelings about uh, working with somebody that has literally disemboweled me numerous times. <laughs> Given not in this timeline, but it has happened to me, damn it. You want me to work with her? Uh. <laughs> and not to mention he has some... Uh significant ptsd involving her at this point <laughs> yeah like uh 30 to 40 percent of his bad memories in death town are have to deal with her still so you know i i can just see the the comic scenes now of her just like trying to get closer to him and he just keeps inching away from her like personal space seriously if you get any closer to me <laughs> he will smoke screen out damn it full zoidberg but yeah, um, we have the bet. We even got a big, like, title card for it, which I'll, I'll probably throw up as the next thing that's on this side of me next next week. But uh, moving on, we have Amelia character progression and development. Holy shit! <laughs> it, it did happen at some point. We got something. We got something. I, I'll call this a minor win. Um... So I'm I'm very happy about this personally because, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the season at the beginning, I I, I need some Amelia story progression for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, we got some backstory, and she lost her crutch, and that Puck has apparently decided to fuck off. Right. Which, as he did mention, he was actively trying to break their contract while he was gone. Which, just as like a random bit of trivia i'd like to know what he was doing <laughs> just as a as a thing like what what could he be possibly been doing to uh actively break the contract probably more or less just sitting there channeling all of his power into actively trying to sever their connection yeah i mean he did lose a uh well, he basically lost size, so as he mentioned, now he's smaller, so, you know. Which... Yeah, like, the whole, the whole thing of what he was saying was talking about, like, how potentially, like, breaking his contract with her is going to greatly weaken him in the long run. But he's still, he's still around, he's just not connected to her and living in that uh, gem, right? He's not, like, dead. I mean... From what we know? From what we know, he probably isn't dead but we don't really know much about Puck. Just from what we know about spirits in general, uh, he's probably still alive, just weakened somewhere else. Right. So we'll see if Puck returns in the future. So, I mean, that, that'll definitely be a thing. Speaking of things, we have three Ryuzu names. And we now know uh, one of them was kicked out of the, uh, the manager rotation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. for uh what we can only assume is uh conspiring with garfield to do things <laughs> so she, she entered the ruins yep she fucked up basically <laughs> at the end of the day the tldr she fucked up and lost her black robes <laughs> she is now just another non- non uh manager copy she's been downranked from black belt to white belt <laughs> which is a fairly sizable downgrade in that world that's literally uh bottom to top or top to bottom sorry <laughs> but yeah uh as we saw in this scene though subaru does drive home the fact that he doesn't want to force people into stuff like you know just calling in like you know i i'm using my position to 
but he's basically he doesn't want to pull rank basically on anybody he just wants to ask for their help and he wants to get it willingly yeah even though despite losing a kid in his blessing he is still recognized as an apostle of greed he doesn't want to actually use his position as the apostle of greed to make to force compliance from the reuses right which you know is for me it's it's good for his just the showing of his mental state like he, he seemed to his once again this this show is subaru versus his mental state and it, I, I think he's pretty much recovered back Beck is close to its 100% as he possibly can be, you know, with everything that's happened. So he, he's probably on the top end of his his mental state. So it, it's good that he's back to, uh, you know, Subaruing and uh, not, like, forcing the issue. Not that I ever thought he would, but, you know, they, it's good that they went to the point of pointing it out. Like, you know, him saying, like, I don't want to have to do that. So it's not cheat Ryuzu the Ryuzus don't assume that he's just ordering them to do it. He actually comes out and says, no, listen, I want you to help me willingly. And if not, then I'll figure something else out. Yeah. Uh... The other uh, interesting thing back on the bet side of things, though, is the whole thing with the bet was that Subaru was betting that he actually manages to beat everything this cycle. So, uh, we'll have to see if he actually does manage to succeed, if we literally have the next 13 episodes being one life. Right. Um, they would have to pack a lot of stuff in, but... I mean, well, it, it is one of those things. I mean, they it could be a pacing thing, so... Time-wise, it could really slow down uh, the last half of the season. You never know right as it stands right now after the bet with roswell roswell states he has three more days before the sanctuary freezes over and the assassins attack so he then finished that day so <laughs> wording wise that doesn't really say if roswell was counting that day so we don't know necessarily if he still has three days or if he's now technically lost a day since there's been a night. Right. Because once again, the wording didn't really state whether or not Roswell was actually counting the present day that was already mostly over. I, I think through part of the three days. Yeah, I think at that point they were on the first day or whatever. So I think he, he means like you have three more days after this because based on what I'm remembering of the timeline it should be three more full days after this you know after this current day. I don't actually remember specifically if we're day one, day two. Yeah I'm pretty sure they were on day two because they had just come out of the first day and then you know Otto finds him at sunrise of the second day. So that should have been on day two, and now we're on day three by the end of this episode, from what I recall. So as it stands, Subaru has the day he's in going to Melia as, you know, day one of three. Yeah. So. Which, based on how this episode ends, uh, most of next episode is probably going to be recapping what happened with Ryuzushima and uh, resolving more of the Amelia situation. Right. I mostly say that because while we're, the primary focus is probably going to be Amelia, one of the things is the whole reason why she took off in the first place is because he ditched in the middle of the night. Right. Cause... Whether willingly or otherwise. Right. I, I, at this point, just heading over to that, um, after this whole conversation getting the Ryuzu's on his side and, you know, getting more insight into what's going on for him, um, the scene was longer than I thought it was. Uh, th th that was actually kind of funny. She couldn't sleep, so she was just kind of sitting on the edge of the bed with the, uh, top of the, uh, top of the, top of the sheets on her head, kind of looking like Satella. <laughs> Then she gives him that look like, no, I'm still Amelia. I'm not crazy. That's good. That's good. He would have been in some shit if she had already lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so. He has this whole scene with Amelia and it's nice and warm and fuzzy and blah blah blah. It's fine. She's uh... We basically get her backstory in this, so for whatever reason she's part frozen. Yeah, part of it. We get part of her backstory in this. So Puck finds her frozen and she clearly has memories of her family before they were frozen based on what happened with Puck leaving her which yes. apparently was a seal for sealing her memories away for mental trauma reasons I assume yeah it is worth noting though that what we see later with the mother and what glimpses we do have of her backstory is it seems like the reason why she was sealed is yes she was sealed in ice but she had a different she was turned into ice in a different way than the rest of them. She was sealed in ice. The rest of them got turned into ice. So right. whatever happened to her was probably something to do with either just her mother or from the sounds of the wording, it sounded more like most of the village agreed that for whatever reason they were going to seal her away to try to prevent whatever was going to happen to them to happen to her. Right. So it might have been like her latent power just inadvertently lashing out and uh, doing that to her own parents, I guess. We don't know. But just once again, yeah, when we go in the flashbacks, they're all turned to ice, but the one brief flashback we have of her is her sealed in an ice cube. Right. Which is, in fact, different. So, Subaru made a promise to stay with her. She did ask him to stay after the, uh, after the whole puck thing, and uh, well, he, uh, he didn't. Because by the end of the episode here, uh, after the whole puck scene, which was it was a solid scene, it was good. I liked it. Uh, I think that's kind of like the uh, the unshackling of her character, so she's not shackled anymore and can get she, actual character progression. Hopefully, she lost her crutch both emotionally and physically. Puck was an emotional crutch because she viewed him as a parental figure and because he was blocking her memories and past traumas but then also an actual physical crutch because she was more or less totally dependent on him to defend her rather than using her own magic right so we'll see where uh where she goes from there and how much of her power is actually diminished now that he's not around because she only has the lesser spirits to call on for magic now at this point, so it'll be definitely well, interesting to see. Two things on that note. For one, like I said, I am already am aware that Amelia at one point or another in the story becomes really fucking strong. But for two, on that note, similar note, the fact that Puck was sealing her memories could imply he was also sealing her power along the lines of like what you were saying about her power possibly going rampate and that's what actually ruined her village it could be that she actually ends up becoming stronger without Puck like suddenly so because like Puck could be very well have been the thing holding her powers back right that very well could be a thing yeah so uh, I guess he's either confident that she can uh, deal with it with Subaru because he did say uh, he's just leaving it to him basically so here goes something he, he's this is basically puck betting on Subaru as well so which that is another scene we'll probably see at some point uh, in the next few episodes or at least during the story arc is what exactly puck and Subaru's conversation was because we only saw the very beginning of that right so between uh, the end of this conversation and Subaru bailing, she got all, uh, you know, even more emotional and decided to bail and run away. Luckily, she just, you know, went to the ruins. So uh, I guess that worked out for the most part. But uh, this is this is where the episode uh, hits its uh, end here is. You know, what What did uh, Subaru leave to do in the middle of the night, which we assume is to talk to Shima here after uh, after Garfield leaves? 
uh, what's also once again was it, did he willingly leave or did she suddenly go to him because right. we see he is fairly roughed up by the end of the episode right so some uh, some fighting probably did occur after uh, after this but um, you would you would assume that Amelia would have heard something if he if she had shown up here you know what I mean if she had like dragged him out of this room Amelia would have noticed yeah you don't we don't know that so maybe she's master of stealth eh? <laughs> no I mean well so Amelia is was sleep deprived at this point and did already passed out once so we have no clue how awake she actually could have possibly been for something like that happening right so there is that too so like I, like I mentioned in the reaction, we're going to have to wait for Captain Hindsight to show up and give us the rundown. <laughs> but by, by the end of the episode here, uh, after Subaru does find Amelia, um, and the whole Otto just doing everything but the air glasses uh, confrontation with Garfield here, which will be interesting to see what Otto's part of the plan is. Ah, yes, there's the straight bet thing. Um, it's apparently the name of the song at the very beginning. Right. So, so they went full uh, full ham there with the, the straight bet on this. Um, but yeah, as we see here, he's uh, he's not looking too hot. He's, he's definitely got some scrapes and bruises by the end here. So going into the next episode hindsight <laughs> you know what what, yeah. what 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 the hell happened in the last 12 hours <laughs> yeah there's definitely shit went down in the previous night and we weren't shown it in this episode so over the next episode or two we're probably gonna f be shown what exactly was going on because while the next episode is probably gonna be fairly amelia centric a core part of it is going to have to resolve on root going to have to be him resolving why he disappeared on her right so whether we get the like i mentioned during the end of the reaction was at some point it might not be next episode it might be like say okay they get to the point where the sanctuary is saved and the barrier is gone and then like you know somebody says so uh subaru this worked out really well how the how the hell did you manage to pull this off and then he turns around to the something effect of, oh, funny you should mention that. Back after Amelia passed out, and then we get the flashback. <laughs> and possibly what he talked to Puck about. So that's what we're looking into, I guess. What we're looking forward to. I'm looking forward to it. I need some questions answered so I have something to do besides sit here in theory craft. <laughs> Because at that point, it's not a discussion of the episode. We're, we're just, all right, well, we watched this one. So what other random, wild, nonsensical theories can we come up with <laughs> like we did last week? And I'm going to have to try even harder to drag this stuff out, which is really hard, mind you. <laughs> I'm running out of things to ramble about, all right? You are running out of cue cards. There's like three left there. I can't, I can't use up all of her cue cards in one session. It's just... She, she can only do so much for me. <laughs> but yeah, I think we made it to the end here just fine, and hopefully next week we'll have something to talk about, but I can't imagine we won't, because at the second part of the Witch's Tea Party, we did have slightly more to talk about. So, yeah, as short as this one may be, I'm looking forward to next week. I'm excited. Um, I'm really excited that Amelia is hopefully getting her development that she needs and deserves as a character. Please. At least some of it, anyway. At least some of it. At least something. At least they're throwing us something here. You know, I went on that huge uh, rant at the, the beginning of the season about her needing it this season, and it was looking like we might not get that. And then the uh, creators was like, nope, hold my beer. <laughs> you want to bet? Here's here's something. They're they're throwing me something, at least. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath, right? Because I, <laughs> I really do like Amelia as a character, and she definitely deserves you know full backstory full everything full development and as age mentioned later in the series yes she does get more powerful but that doesn't necessarily mean she will get the development that i'd like to see out of it but 
we'll, yeah, we'll see what I'm talking about. Power, power scaling wise, and I don't know when or why. I just know that I've seen multiple power scaling charts, and uh, she apparently gets really up there. Right. Well, I'm interested to see how that happens, mind you. Uh, hopefully her character is uh, right up there on the power scaling uh, of being really good. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. And yeah, I I'm out of theories. I'm out of cue cards. Age, you got anything for us here at the end? Um, <clears throat> not really, but except for we should probably reiterate the RAM and REM thing. Right, so uh, just in case the reaction has an issue, um, we did check out uh, the sub of the last episode where Roswell is going on his spiel about, you know, the only person who's ever made him feel this way is Rem. And he distinctly says Rem in the dub, which again, we watched the dub because reasons. And not because we hate subs or anything, it's a me problem with something mentioned earlier. But in the sub, it says Rem with an A. Not any. So translation error, hopefully, or the stuff we talked about, we'll have to re-theorize. But, you know, if it's RAM, makes sense and it's fine. If it's REM, then we've got some weirdness that we have to see what, where that goes. But we're pretty damn sure that it was just a translation error at this point. I mean, it, it was a translation error one way or the other. One of them got it wrong. They can't both be right. Yeah, they both can't. Yeah. They likely, both can't be right. It's most likely that it was RAM, right? Not REM. So I'm just gonna go, go forward on the assumption of that. Yeah. Honestly, that's that's what I assumed in the first place. When when he was saying it, I was like gonna say, "Oh, he's gonna mean REM." I mean RAM, but then he says REM, and I'm like, hmm? "Yeah." The, and that was the thing because we we he's, went back and watched both of it, and he distinctly says REM in the dub, and in the sub he says ROM. So it's like. <laughs> when, when like i've mentioned he basically never gives really any major attention to rem rem is more or less just the more or less just the free and byproduct of him of him having ram around right so there's that so we're, we're from from here on out we're just going under the assumption until when and if something proves otherwise you know some some weird thing that we can make a call back and be like well i, I guess the sub was wrong, but we really doubt it at this point. <laughs> so we're, we're just going to continue forward going under the assumption and that that was a translation error. And uh, he actually meant ROM, which makes the most sense. So we'll just leave it at that. And speaking of RAM again, uh, she's... Uh, ROM definitely needs to get some burns in here because her backlog, as I mentioned earlier, is, is getting up there. <laughs> yeah, she's actually being helpful and semi-competent she's starting to infringe on rem's gimmick while she's away i know what the hell she can't lose her own gimmick in the process i started that counter and everything <laughs> unbelievable but anyway ladies and gentlemen people of youtube once again thank you all for stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for another anime night in the dojo featuring re-zero season 2 episode 14 in this case was pretty much self-explanatory again but that's okay we uh we have ways of talking about stuff and nonsense even if there's not a lot to talk about three major talking points in this episode and we we got through them all and i, I drug it out somehow but we'll be back next week with another episode on wednesdays as usual so look forward to that and yeah push the like subscribe follow punch your mouse you know hit that f10 key I don't know what the hotkey to sub and like is. Maybe YouTube has an algorithm for that these days. Either way, we appreciate any and all support you give us. It's always appreciated. And have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you as you watch. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one.